last week there were two reports that came out on television about one being heavy is healthier, the other being having too much weight is very unhealthy. I guess I'm always moving around and expecting some external about weight and health the tide well, that's sort of logical when you think about, you heard two reports and they said opposite things. Correct. And we want to say, even if they said the same thing, that report is irrelevant because the only thing that is relevant is where you are in relationship to where you want to be. And the reason that they can't get a handle on it and they can't offer a process or a diet or a pill that will bring everyone to an ideal um, appearance is because you are all different in the rockets you are launching, you see. It's interesting. Let, let's approach this from, from a, a, a different way than you're anticipating. And then we'll come right back around to everything that you want here. But consider this. When you are a child and you have an inner being within you, and even in your first living of life, you're asking for things, and your inner being becomes those things immediately, vibrationally, and calls you toward them. So right away, in your first days, but certainly you can be consciously aware of it in your first year and two and three and four, that you have inclinations because the source within you is definitely calling you toward your prescribed path. Now, sometimes people worry about that. Oh, a two-year-old or a one-year-old is guiding his own course. And we say, you've got to remember, this is very old energy. This is energy that was leaping in at a very powerful rate after living a lot of life. And so you were hardly new at this. And so this life experience was just helping you tailor this specific life to things that were specifically important to you. So now this energy stream is rolling. This river of energy is moving and it's calling you and you're feeling an impulse to go. But you live in a household or in a classroom. You live in a world where they're all selfishly oriented too. And sometimes your pleasing yourself doesn't please them. So at very early ages... Most of you lose your sense of catering to or leaning to your own source energy calling because your mother is saying to you really loud and in your ears and in your face, I don't care what you feel like doing. I want you to do what I want you to do. <laughs> right. So she trains you to begin to always keep an eye to her response of your behavior. So now you're behaving and your own inner being is calling you saying, this is who you are and this is what you said you want and this is the path of least resistance. This is the path toward your coming into alignment with who you are. And while you're feeling that, you're hearing your mother saying, now I said, and I'm not going to tell you again, that you're not to go do that. You are to come here and do this. And it doesn't take very long before most of you have an inner being that's drowned out by the ruckus that's going on around. Now, your mother meant really well, but she did something that she didn't count on doing, and that is she trained you away from your guidance system, which meant now you're on the hunt for guidance. So now you're listening to your peers. Now you're listening to your boyfriend. Now you're listening to the television. Now you're listening to the health nuts now you're listening now you're listening to the media now you're listening and then and then you say and how odd the officials who should know how to guide me have come out with two studies and one says this <laughs> and the other says the opposite and right. we say you've been looking for love in all the wrong places long enough <laughs> Stop listening to them. They don't know. They don't know who you were coming in. They don't know what your life has caused you to become. They don't know where you are in relationship to who you, who you want to be. In other words, there are so many standards. There are young girls that have the standard of fitting the eye of the, the model that has been established that are depriving themselves of wellness, that are starving their bodies, their organs are shutting down for the sake of something that someone else wants 
for them and that they want on the outside, where the source within them is calling them toward not only the beauty that they crave and should very well have, but the physical well-being as well. In other words, you don't have to give up one thing to have another. You can have it all. And the re reason you can have it all is because in every segment of your life experience from wherever you are standing, you're asking for the next thing that you want, you see. So first order of business is make a decision that you're not going to look out there at the studies and at the experts. The experts are disagreeing with one another on every subject in the world. It's just not working out well at all <laughs> to wait for somebody else out there to figure out your life. Yes. You're here yes. to live it to figure it out, to live it. To give birth to the ideas and then to line up with them, you see. Yes. I really do see that. I mean, that's the entire part of health is really, I, you know, if I feel sick, I want to go to a doctor who's going to fix it. And I know that's not the place to go. Here's the thing that's interesting about all of this is that when you are pudgy, as you say, and you want to be more slender, it's interesting that the idea of the trying to find the image of more slender when it comes out of the image of being pudgy, it's already watered down. It's like when you're sick, that's when you want to be well. But it's really an infrequent thing. People hardly ever do it where they just deliberately look for a feeling of well-being. This is the thing we want you to realize. You can't intentionally feel good from a place of not feeling bad if you feel bad. In other words, we get it that wherever you are is where you are. But if you could make peace with where you are and then let your reaching for those feelings that feel better, just more, in other words, from a neutral place of most of you have made food your enemy because Almost everything you eat, somebody has told you that there's something inherently wrong with it. And so it's a rare one of you who really enjoys or plans what you eat. And so our encouragement is that you make a decision that you're going to be more deliberate about more things and not in a compensating fashion. In other words, if you will start appreciating your body just for the sake of appreciating it, not for the ulterior motive of getting it whipped into shape, but just for the the, the reason of appreciating it, if you will just breathe on purpose and smell delicious air on purpose and bask in the beauty of the day on purpose and revel in the dexterity of your body on purpose and feel the vitality of your body on purpose and appreciate your body on purpose, you'll start tuning yourself to that vibrational escrow image of yourself and your body must follow the vibrational suit. It just has to. And anything else that's happening is not because of what you're doing in terms of action. It's vibrational. It's all vibrational. It's all vibrational. It's all vibrational. It's all vibrational. It's all, did we say that it's all vibrational? I get it's that. It's all yeah. vibrational.